Do you want to relax while painting some simple flowers? Are you looking to explore your creativity but don't know how to paint or draw? Or you stare at a white piece of paper and don't know what to do? Then this video is for you. Hi, I am Adrian, and this is the first of many videos where I will guide you and show you simple ways to paint, draw, and be more creative while helping you relax. I am relaunching this YouTube channel with content designed just for you. So let's get started. First, I'm going to explain what materials you are going to need. A sketchbook, one that is for all media. You can tell because the pages are a bit thicker and smooth at the same time. Brushes, you're going to need a few different size brushes, a large and a medium square brush, a medium and a small round brush, and a detail brush. You will also need a plastic cup with water to clean your brushes and a paper plate to pour the paint. These two things make cleanup super easy. Just toss them when you're done. A few acrylic paints. I chose magenta, light blue, and a brilliant yellow, green, white, and black for accents. An old gift card. We will use it to spread some paint. That's it, and now we're going to get to work. Because this is supposed to be fun and relaxing, I want you to start with a deep breath. Feel all the tension leave your body. Do this a couple more times if you need to. We are going to be working on both pages of the sketchbook. We're going to do half of it in one color and then we're going to keep this white or maybe I'll do this one color. And I think I want to try this magenta to bring some uplifting energy onto this page. So I'm going to simply put some of that paint on the edge of the gift card and place the edge with the paint on the middle of the page and just drag it out like this. Notice that I have a mat under the sketchbook that's pretty dirty, but it's pretty dirty because I use it for things like this. So I don't need to worry about getting the table dirty. You can see that a little bit of paint covers the whole page without too much excess paint being left on the surface. That's how we get color on a large surface with a little bit of paint. And you can do this basically on a piece of paper if you don't have a sketchbook. You could tape down the paper so it doesn't get a chance to lift as it often happens when you start painting and the moisture from the paint makes the paper want to curl up like it's trying to do right now. I'm also using the magenta color, but you could really pick any three bright colors that you have that would complement each other, that have enough contrast uh, to create this exercise. For the sake of time, I am going to use a craft dryer and I am going to speed up the video, but you're not in a hurry, so you can take your time and wait for the paint to dry. You can also pause this video at any point. Because I was playing with that magenta color, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of that in here and I'm going to take one of the brushes, like this medium square brush here, and then I'm going to dab the brush with paint and make sure both sides have paint and the brush is saturated enough. Then you're just going to the page and look at the size of the page, right? So I don't want to make really tiny circles. Why circles? Because we're going to make some flowers. But first, I'm going to look at the entire page and decide where I want to put those flowers. I will start with the first circle right here and it will eventually look like a flower. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can take the brush and you can basically just rotate it like that. Get a little bit more paint and paint the other side. The circles don't have to be perfect. That is not what we're trying to do. Now a couple more. So when we're working with shapes like this on a page and thinking about composition, which is how things are arranged on a page, odd numbers work better visually than even numbers. What I'm trying to do here is I'm also trying to space them out and place them on the page in a way that is visually appealing. I am also tying the left page with the right side by using the magenta color. If you want to have some music playing in the background, 
something that gets you in the mood to paint and unwind, go ahead and do that. I'm not playing any music right now because of copyright issues with YouTube. So it's just my voice, but you can just find something that you like to listen to, something that goes with your vibe. Okay, I have one, two, three, four. I need one more. I need to use this entire space. They don't have to be evenly spaced either, but I'm thinking, I don't know why, but I want to use this space in this corner, don't you think? So you make one more circle and it doesn't have to be super perfect. To make the circle, notice that I just twist my wrist. You motion your wrist in a circle and that's it. Now I'm cleaning the brush so that I have it clean in case I want to use it later on. Let me show you that I just swish the brush around in the water and then squeeze it against the edge and repeat the process a few times until the water comes out clean. I am moving on to the next color, green. I squeeze a little bit of this green onto the paper plate. I take the medium sized round brush, dab it in green acrylic paint. Now I am going to make some green leaves using the brush and with gentle pressure, I make a curved line. I then make another curved line to join both ends together and fill in the inside with paint. We're not going for perfection, so don't worry about anything if it really does not come out great. Okay, so now we have one leaf. I'm showing you this process one more time. I make a curved line. Notice that I am using my fingers to make the rotating motion and my wrist is anchored on the paper. This gives your hand stability to make the line. I can repeat this process and add leaves to all the flowers. There's another way of making leaves with a pointy round brush. And this is by saturating the entire brush with paint and then in one stroke making the leaf. Basically, you start with light pressure and only touching the tip of the brush on the page. You then tilt the brush and add more pressure so the entire brush touches the paper. As you lift the brush, you move the tip to finish the other side of the leaf. You might find that this technique is more difficult or not. Now I'm going to come to this flower and add more leaves, but of course I have to look around it to make sure that compositionally everything that I'm doing works. So I'm not going to do it on this side because it's too close to the other flower. I'm going to come to the other side and put my two leaves there, just like this. I dab the brush and paint in between each leaf. I'm now going to add leaves to all the other flowers. Notice that I'm doing two close together at a time and that's what I'm doing on all the different flowers because I want to make sure they have a similar look. While I continue to paint these flowers, I want to say that if you like what you see, make sure you like this video. Better yet, subscribe by pressing the button below and see more videos like this one. I want to reach as many people as possible with my videos because my tutorials are very easy to follow. So anyone with some free time can follow along, but I need your help in getting the word out. Please share with friends or anyone you know that might benefit from this video. I am going to do a leaf here that goes outside of the edge, but that's okay because sometimes using the edge and having things going off of it creates a little bit of movement and works compositionally. While the leaves are drying, I'm going to move to the left side of the page and work on what I'm going to add to this background, this magenta background. So I'm going to take some white paint and by using my big square brush, I'm going to be adding some circles using the same technique, which is basically twisting the wrist in a circular motion. I'm going to repeat this process four more times until I have five total circles. The white is supposed to act as a neutralizing color. So when I add the flowers on top of the white, the magenta color is not gonna come through and alter 
the color that's on the flowers. Usually if I were to do this directly on the magenta color, you would find that the magenta and the green or the blue would mix together a little bit and wouldn't show a true blue or a true green. So that's why I'm adding the white circles. Plus it also complements um, what's on the right side because we're using basically the same color scheme. For the sake of time, I'm going to speed up the video through this process, but what you're trying to achieve is five circles and two fully dry pages before you move on to the next step. Now that I have both pages dried, I am going to move on to the next step, which is adding blue dots to the white background. I am using a medium size round brush dabbed in blue paint and I am using it to make dots on the paper. These dots don't have to be the same distance from each other, but try to make them about the same size so that you are creating a repetitive pattern. Speaking of repetition, this process is very time consuming but it's also very soothing and relaxing because of the repetition involved in making the background. This should help you focus and concentrate more. Remember, breathe and release all the tension and anxiety. Enjoy this process and your time making it. I will be speeding up the video to get to the next step. Please check and make sure everything is dried before this next step. Using the smaller round brush, the same brush that you use to make your dots, you will make flowers with four petals each. Petals are, in a simplified manner, triangles. So we're going to try to make triangles that are joined at the center. You will start with the wider side of the petal and make one line to where it will join with other petals. Then come back to the top of the petal and go to the outside edge of the first line to make that side wider and make the line join at the center where all the other petals meet. Make sure you're using your wrist to help you with this motion. The petals also make a plus symbol, so you can think of that as you think about how to place the petals on the circle. As you make more of these, it becomes easier and you have five flowers to make, so it'll be super easy by the time you get to the fifth flower. The beauty about this type of paintings is that we're not looking for perfection and we're not looking for a lot of accuracy. In nature, things are never entirely the same. There is a lot of um, differences. Even with one flower, you will find that the petals don't always they're not always the same size and they're not always um, the same shape. So the same thing happens when you're painting. It gives you a little bit of freedom to not be super perfect. So again, the idea is to just um, take this time to enjoy the process and to enjoy making these shapes and using color. And hopefully you have some really great music in the background to motivate you. And at the same time, I hope you enjoy uh, you know, the, the video that I've put together and I do enjoy putting this together for you and I plan to make more of these videos. Your support means a lot and um, you can support me by watching it. You can support me by liking it. You can support me by sharing it and definitely by following and subscribing to my video. Um, you can see that I have an Instagram account as artsy.soul. This channel is artsy soul period. I had to pay, place a period at the end because somebody already had artsy soul and I didn't want to use numbers. Um, but in any case, I hope you follow me and you subscribe so that I can continue to make more videos for you. Now we're getting to the part that I enjoy a lot. Check that everything is dry. Now we are going to add some embellishments. We're going to start with the white acrylic paint first by adding some details to the magenta flowers. I will be adding some semicircles and I will be using my wrist in a half circle motion and my palm for stability. I start by applying light pressure at first, a little bit more pressure in the middle and then light pressure again. I will rotate the semicircles towards the inside until I get to the center of the flower. I will do this with each of the flowers until they all have those embellishments. They really look more like roses now, right? Since you know what you have to do, and for the sake of time, 
I am going to fast forward through all the other four roses until we get to the next step. The next step is adding some details to the blue flowers. I think adding green on the center of each flower will make them pop. A very simple design so far. Now we are going to use black paint and a fine round brush to add some details. We are going to use this fine brush to make some outlines. Keep your brush with enough paint by dabbing it in between strokes so that the brush glides and don't worry about being accurate with the lines. In fact, lines that are a little off give this a more dynamic look. You basically want to make the outline following the shape of the green leaf that you've already painted. And we're also going to add some veins inside each leaf. The lines do not have to be the same thickness at all. Take your time. Each leaf should look unique. Similar, but unique. Use the gentle movement of the brush as a reminder to release any tension you're still holding on to. Inhale and exhale with each brush stroke. Be mindful and be present with each stroke. Now we are going to make outlines around the roses. Try to make the outlines in two or three strokes at a time. Join each stroke so there are no gaps and yes, definitely use your wrist to be able to make more accurate semicircles. We're also adding a few black rose petals to create some contrast with the white. Those can overlap the white strokes we just made. Just play with it and have fun. I am looking at the left corner and I see a little bit of an empty space and I'm thinking about adding a few leaves here. Just outlines though, I don't want to bring the green on this corner because I think it would be distracting. So I'm going to start with one leaf by using the same technique that I used by, to make the outlines. And I'm going to start with the the leaf and, and then I'm going to add more behind it. I have to think that visually to, to make this accurate, but when I add more behind it, it's going to look like they're behind. So there's going to be a part of the leaf that we're not going to see. Only about half of the leaf is going to show. So I start the second leaf in what would be say the middle of the leaf, because again, part of it is not going to be showing. And so I'm going to make a shorter curved line. I then pick another spot opposite from the first leaf and make another curved line that now meets with the corner of the line that I just made. So in essence, I'm, I'm creating the visual of the leaf. I can then go ahead and add the vein lines um, that, that I can pretty much see where they need to go. And then I can repeat this process uh, with the other leaves and I can change the position a little bit so that they're not exactly in a row. They're one's going to the left, one's going to the right, but I'm still creating a corner border for this particular area. I check that everything is dry and now I'm going to make outlines for all the elements that are that make up the flower. So the center, I'm going to outline the center and I'm also going to add um, some folds to the petals and then I'm going to outline each petal so that now I have the entire flower completely outlined. And I'm going to be doing this with each of the flowers so that I end up with a consistent and cohesive look.
And of course, I'm going to speed up through this process so that I can take you to the finished product. We have reached the end of this tutorial. You have completed a guided painting by me, Adrian, your host. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow me on other social media platforms. See you soon.